Hi everyone, this is Trevor Jones from astrobackyard.com and in this video I'm going to cover a new noise reduction tool for image processing for astrophotography images. It's Topaz Labs Denoise AI. Now this tool wasn't designed specifically for astrophotography, but I think you'll find that it does a great job. It can be used as a standalone software or as a plugin for your favorite image processing tools such as Adobe Photoshop. One of the biggest challenges in astrophotography image processing is dealing with noise, the noise reduction. It's a delicate balance between removing noise, removing those grainy artifacts and the random color pixels from the image without losing detail, and that's what makes it so challenging. Up until discovering Denoise AI, I used the Adobe Camera Raw filter set, the luminance slider, and that did a pretty good job. You could control the balance between loss of detail and noise reduction, but I found that the Denoise AI tool does an even better job than the baked-in tool in Adobe Photoshop. As a matter of fact, I even added a new section to my image processing guide that covers Topaz Denoise AI. So you can use this tool for your astrophotography, whether it's a deep sky image of a galaxy or nebula, or a wide angle nightscape image as well. The tool I think is primarily used for nature photographers and landscape photographers to recover images that were shot using high ISO settings. But I think a lot of astrophotographers are starting to realize that it's such a powerful tool that we can use to improve our photos. So before we dive in, obviously image stacking and the signal to noise ratio is the key to creating beautiful images with a healthy amount of signal and not a lot of noise. So whether you're using a DSLR camera, dedicated astronomy camera, image stacking and, and integrating a lot of exposure time, that's the best way to avoid noise and to be able to process a really smooth, beautiful image. But even with that being said, with the best acquisition practices in mind, you'll still likely need to do some noise reduction as a part of your image processing workflow. So the Topaz Labs Denoise AI software can be downloaded as a free trial for 30 days before purchasing, and that's exactly what I did. Now we're gonna hop into Adobe Photoshop and I'm gonna run you through a few examples of the tool on a few different types of images just to show you how effective it actually is. So here is how you run the software, just in the filters drop-down menu, if you've installed it correctly, you'll see Topaz Labs, Topaz Denoise AI. Then it kind of opens on top of Photoshop, and I really love the user interface of the software. So up on the top right, you can see the navigator, that's how you kind of browse around your image. Uh, important to note is the zoom percentage at the top, we're at 100%, you can go back to 50%, and then I'm almost scared to do it, zoom in at 200%, but this is really where you wanna be looking if you wanna get down to the nitty gritty and control that noise. So on the onset here, if you see the controls, there's, there's two models to choose from, the Denoise AI and the AI Clear. Now the AI Clear is, from my understanding, is the older version of the noise reduction tool from Topaz. It was one that was integrated into their Topaz Lab Studio whereas the Denoise AI is their new, you know, premium version of this noise reduction software. There's two modes to choose from, there's manual and auto. What's really crazy about the software is that the auto does like a really impressive job, which almost seems too good to be true because it's a one-click action auto, save your image and voila, it's better than it was before. And then you can see clearly right in front of your face, which is so nice, your split screen original versus the preview with the effects applied. And you can change that of course to just a single version so you can get a full view of the preview with your effects applied. But I think the split is probably the most useful to, to do a direct comparison of your image beforehand. There's also a brighten mode, which is sometimes useful to really pull out the darker areas and some of the banding and stuff that's kind of hidden in the in the shadows, literally hidden in the shadows. Uh, but for now, we'll just use, leave it on split mode without the brighten at 200% uh, view. So if you want to dig into it, you can go into manual mode and actually control this slider here for remove noise. If we crank that all the way up, no surprises there. What it looks like, very soft but also potentially, depending on your project, maybe what you're going for. If this was a really wide angle shot from this view, uh, that softer view doesn't look so bad. Some of you might prefer that. I accept a little bit of 
you know, crunchiness in my image just to get a little sharper. I'm gonna bump it down to 16 on that scale. And if we zoom into 100%, we should get a better look at that. Already I see an improvement. It's just kind of smoothed out some of that color noise. And you can, you have the option of adjusting the recover original detail slider as well to try and find that balance between noise reduction and loss of detail. At the bottom, you'll see the chroma noise reduction strength. Now chroma noise is basically is color noise. So if you move this slider up too much because you want to get those weird green colors and the darker areas gone, you may find that you've lost color in your actual deep sky object. In, in this case, the, the pink nebula of the lagoon nebula and the eagle. So you wanna be careful with that one, maybe leave that pretty low. But again, with this original versus preview split screen, you can make those decisions and spend a lot of time in here and getting everything just the way you want it. So I think for this image, in this case, I'm gonna move the sharpen down and maybe the remove noise up a little bit. Let's go into 200%, see what we're looking like there. And maybe even remove even a little more noise. And so I don't know if what you think, what you're seeing here, but I see a definite improvement between kind of the, the dark areas of the Milky Way on the preview versus the original. And hopefully you're getting a sense for how powerful this could be and the wheels are spinning and thinking, wow, how could I use this to save some of my old astrophotos? So I'm gonna click the save button here and depending on the processing power of your computer and the size of your image, uh, that could take a while for me, it was almost instant. So here's the new image with the noise reduction applied. Now this is a smaller, kind of crunchier image to begin with. Some of you that like your big high resolution images might be cringing a little bit saying, oh wow, this is, you know, you've destroyed your image, but it wasn't that great of a photo to begin with. So what I always like to do when I'm processing astrophotos is dig into the history and do a before and after that way. So here's before the action and there's after. So we definitely lost a little bit of detail, but we've also smoothed out a lot of those darker areas. And I think it's an improvement overall. Something that I really think you should look into is making a copy of your new layer with the Topaz Labs Denoise AI effects applied and pasting that on the original and then adjusting the opacity after the fact. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the Topaz Denoise version, go back to my original, and in the layers palette, paste that on top. So now not only can we turn it off and on, adjust the opacity of you know how much we want to apply these effects, but also get into things like masking. So let's say we want to smooth out only the darker areas. We could go in, select the use the select color range tool, sampled colors, just go into the highlights here. And now we can selectively isolate those areas using the Select and Mask tool. If you're new to the Select and Mask tool, I have a video dedicated about it and how much I, I love it and how powerful it is. But we can define our selection, leave those areas alone intact, and then apply the denoise noise reduction techniques only to the areas that we want to affect. So as you can see here, I've got my light areas pasted on top in this layer and my noise reduction underneath. So you can see how you could really get into this and in defining and selecting and masking your areas that you want to preserve those details and manually control that aspect of it. So really powerful stuff. Now we'll get into a deep sky image of why don't we go to the tadpoles nebula. This was a good example. So this is a image that was built using narrowband filters and a monochrome camera. And it was generally, the noise wasn't bad. I mean, the sensor was cooled down to minus 35 degrees Celsius. Not very noisy at all, but let's see if we can improve on it with this filter. So again, I'll invoke it using Topaz Labs Denoise AI. So already in the auto mode, I see a definite improvement in some of these subtle areas of noise throughout the image. You can really notice it usually in the darker areas. So the auto mode I think has made an improvement. We can turn up that chroma noise reduction strength just a little bit. But let's go into manual and see if we can really get this just the way we want it. So I'm going to go into remove noise. 
Maybe I'll turn that sharpen down a little bit. Actually, I'll turn them both down a little bit. And let's just see the difference here. So here's the image after the denoise, very subtle in this instance. I'm gonna copy that, go back in the history state and paste that on top. So actually look at that, what a, a side benefit there. It removed a lot of those magenta hues, which were, you know, as far as denoise AI was concerned, chroma noise. So it had the benefit of actually reducing that color fringing around these brighter stars, which I would say help this image out. Of course, it took away some of those wacky colors in the, the tadpoles nebula itself, but very interesting to see the ways you can control and manipulate your image. So I think the point I'm trying to make here is no matter which type of astrophoto you use it on, having the ability can, to control noise and chroma noise and smooth it out with the power of masking to isolate different areas, it's a very powerful technique and it's one that I now use on all of my astro photos. So I hope you found that useful to see the tool in action. Uh, as for the AI machine learning aspect of it, if you're a little confused about that, basically the way the software was built is they inputted millions of noisy images and through this rejection method, we're able to train the software into, okay, what is noise? What do we want to remove? And what's the detail that we want to retain? And through this AI training method, the software was able to get really good at noise reduction. So it's pretty amazing and you really just have to try it for yourself to believe it. If you're using another method for noise reduction in your astrophotography and you're happy with it, there's no need to upgrade to Topaz Denoise AI, but I think you should at least try the 30 day trial and see it for yourself and compare the results you're getting. Because personally, I found this to do the best job I've seen so far which is really exciting for astrophotographers that are just sick of dealing with noise. This is a great one-click tool and honestly I've been using it on every image I've processed over the last month or so. So I hope you found this video useful. Check out Topaz Labs Denoise AI and until next time, clear skies. For those of you that may have their guard up, I wasn't paid to endorse this product at all. They have no idea that I'm making this video, nor have I ever done that. I've never done a paid promotion video. I've never been paid by anyone to make a video, but I'm starting to think maybe I should. What do you think of Denoise AI, buddy? Do you like it? Yeah. <laughs> Good boy.